In this video, I'm going to talk about a CMM machine. This is a Zeiss Duramax with Calypso. I'm going to go through stylus system qualification. So I'll do this in two videos. This video will be concerned with the master probe and the reference sphere. The next video, I'll go through the first stylus qualification. So if you don't know, you have to do a qualification on a stylus system in order to run a program. After it's qualified, you can keep using it as long as you don't change it. You can use it basically forever. You should requalify probes, you know, maybe once a week or once a shift if you're using the machine a lot, but you have to do it at least once the first time. Now, real quick, a stylus system is just a bunch of styli. Now it can be one styli or it can be several and they can be arranged in a bunch of different ways. So you can see this is a star probe. This idea with this one, so you attach it to the machine and it can come into things from the side. Say you have like a horizontal hole you want to measure. A more typical uh, probe is just straight down. So this would come in if you're checking, you know, just the top of a part or even the sides of a shallow part, this would be the best bet. And I'll go through how to qualify this kind tomorrow. Now, each individual little tip here is called a stylus and they all have to be qualified separately. So what qualification does is bridge the gap between, you know, the dimensions of this and how long it is and all that information between you know the piece and the machine so you don't really have to tell the machine anything about this you don't have to get out calipers and measure it and tell the machine hey this is 60 millimeters long and the probe is this the machine figures that out for you by this reference sphere and this little guy called a master probe right so the reference sphere comes from the factory this a uh, ball of rock has a known diameter. Uh, it's very, very accurate and it's matched to the machine. So you don't want to mix these up uh, with machines. You definitely don't want to drop it or anything, okay? In a minute, we'll bolt it down to the machine. You can leave it bolted to the machine if you have room. If you have like a really big part, you might have to take it off, but you'll have to put it back on if you're gonna re-qualify stylus systems. Now the master probe, it's just a probe with a known size and length that comes with the machine that works with this to figure out all the other styli. So the way it works, I'll attach this reference sphere. I'm going to run a program with the master probe, uh, which will get the position of the reference sphere. Okay, so it's going to establish a zero. It knows everything about this. It'll know everything about that. So when I run a different stylus, a qualification program, it'll come around, it'll touch, it'll scan, and it'll figure the difference between this probe and the master probe. And the computer will have all the information it needs to successfully run a program and check a part. Sounds difficult, but the computer does almost all of this math by itself. You really don't have to do anything, but point this at the reference probe and probe once and the computer will do all the calculations it needs. Qualification requires a couple of steps. The first one is to load the master probe. Next, we'll go mount the reference sphere. Next, we'll qualify the reference sphere. This is also called reference sphere position, okay? Then we'll change the stylus system. Then we'll qualify each stylus on a stylus system. And the last step will be to assign that stylus system to a holder. So the holder is back here. It's just a little corral for all the stylus systems so that the machine can change them automatically. If you're running a program with multiple stylus systems, you don't have to change them manually. It'll go in and grab them if you set that stylus system holder up correctly. So step one, we're gonna load the master probe. I'll move the uh, device closer to me. I'm gonna use my keyboard here. First thing I'll do is press one of these lock buttons so that I can drive it toward me. So the one on the right controls left, right, front, back. The one on the left controls up and 
down. You can see the machine moving back there. So to load the Master Pro, I gotta tell the machine what we're doing. So I'll go to the screen here. It's in the, the middle top of their uh, title bar, and I'll include a picture for you. Manual stylus system change. I wanna pick up a stylus. So this button right here tells me to insert the stylus system, and I'm gonna do just that. All I wanna do is line up. There's three little red dots on here. There's gonna be three little blue dots on here. I'll line them up, and there's a little magnet that grabs it, okay? You can kind of twist it back and forth and make sure it's locked in there. It should be good to go. I'm going to hit OK on that dialog, and then I'll select the stylus system. I'll select Master Probe and hit OK. So the machine knows what probe we have in there. Now we're ready for step two. We're going to mount the reference sphere. Now this part's pretty easy. You can put it anywhere you want. The only criteria is that you don't really want to put it in the middle because it's probably where you're going to put your parts, right? You can run the risk of running the machine into the reference sphere, which we don't want. You can put it near the edge, but you don't want it like hanging off of the edge in case you're qualifying a star probe. The machine can only go so far out. So what I'll typically do is drive the machine over, see how far it can go. I'll grab the biggest star pro I'm gonna use and make sure I still have room for the reference sphere before I go ahead and bolt it down. You can use bolt, you can use clamps, uh, you can use crazy glue if you wanted to. Anything that's gonna get this thing on the table where it won't mysteriously move around you know, at night or in between shifts. So I'll do that right now. Our reference sphere is mounted. Now I'm going to qualify the reference sphere, or in other words, you know, find the position of the reference sphere. So I'll go to my screen here. I want to choose the CMM tab. I'll go to the second item here, stylus system. This right here, I want to reference the sphere position. Okay, so I'm going to click here. Of course, it's going to have some questions for us. Now, if your reference sphere is sticking straight up, you're gonna have tilt at 180 degrees and you're gonna have the rotation at zero degrees. Now, there are situations where you'll tilt the reference sphere if you have styli that are at different angles. Not gonna do that today, right? So I'll hit okay on this dialog. The next one, probing behavior and probing dynamic and percent. This is used when you have longer than normal styli or really short styli. It's basically the sensitivity of the force. So one of the things it's doing when it's gonna you know, run around and scan this is it's gonna apply force and then measure how much deflection there is. So this is just a way to kind of fine tune how it interprets that. For any normal stylus, uh, just leave it as default. And now it's gonna ask us to probe in the direction of the stylus shaft. So all that means, if we have a stylus that's straight down, we wanna probe down. If we had a star stylus, and say we're checking the one on the left, we wanna probe this way, right? Yeah, pretty self-explanatory. So I'm gonna again drive the machine, I'll move it up, move it to the right, and get right on top of that. It doesn't have to be hyper accurate, I'm just gonna do it sitting down if you wanna stand up and look over the top. Maybe imagine like a, a quarter inch circle on the top of that reference sphere is about the target you need to hit. So after I'm right on top of it, I'm just gonna slowly drive down. It's gonna beep, and now it's on autopilot. So the computer is just gonna do its magic. It's gonna drive around, it'll take some points, it'll do some scanning. It's just figuring out where that reference sphere is and qualifying that master probe so that we can use that information for all the other stylus systems. Now you can see on the screen back here, it is showing us the points it's taking, and it looks kind of cool. This process just takes a, a couple minutes. When it's finished, the master probe will be about an inch above the reference sphere, and it just stops. It doesn't give you a dialogue or anything. It'll just be sitting there, 
and then it'll be ready to go. So in the next video, we'll talk about qualifying a stylus system. Now, if you're in a pinch, you can use the master probe to inspect a part if it will, you know, physically fit in all the places it's supposed to. But you typically want to use a different stylus system for checking parts. The master probe has a kind of large ruby on the end of it, so it's, you know, not good for every particular part. Next week, we'll go over the stylus system. I'll do a straight down and I'll do a star probe. So that's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like and subscribe.